Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guest is from DDN. We have Jeff Denworth, who is the uh, VP of Marketing for Data Direct Networks. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Rich. Oh, it's my pleasure. Now, you know, Jeff, we, we're coming into SC11 here, and the thrust of the conference is... Um, data intensive computing. So I thought, you know, we should talk about what you guys got going on and maybe see what uh, you can show us about DDN's plans for announcements. Yeah, so um, so thanks. So yeah, Supercomputing 2011. Uh, we, we enter this year our most successful year in, in high performance computing. Uh, and uh, the supercomputing event will be a reflection of that to be sure. So Today we're talking about the announcement of our SFA 12K platform, which will be kind of a centerpiece of a much broader uh, series of announcements and discussions that we're uh, we're beginning as we um, as we roll into the show. Uh, you can be sure that, that that 12K is the centerpiece and the, kind of the center of what we'll be talking about, but not nearly um, the extent of of the discussion. So, um, so, so to that end, uh, what we are what we are talking, uh, what we've announced today is the SFA 12,000. This is our um, series of new storage systems that are designed for the biggest of big data applications. You, know, you had mentioned the shows about data intensive computing. We've been operating in the space for over a decade now, and um, what we're we're talking about today is a system that is um, reestablished and um, um, reasserted DDN's uh, overarching leadership in the space by delivering the highest performance systems with the greatest data center de- density, and as well, a lot of engineered intelligence that we built into this system to be able to take advantage of um, um, the, the, the big data that our customers are creating and making it easier to capture, to process, and to distribute data across our networks. <clears throat> so. The SFA 12,000 or 12K is uh, 800% faster than competing systems in the marketplace, which spells a great uh, systems consolidation and uh, systems performance acceleration story for our customers who are continuing to push the boundaries of data intensive computing. Uh, The system operates at 40 gigabytes a second peak performance and um, is capable of delivering a level of flash IOPS, which are really beyond compare. The next aspect of the system announcement is about a a new storage enclosure that we use to power all these systems. We're calling it the storage scaler 8460. Uh, This 84 is a designation of the fact that we've got 84 drives being held in only 4U of space. So with 4 terabyte hard drives that the system will support, we're going to be pushing the boundaries of over 3 petabytes of data storage in a single rack and a system that can manage up to um, six and a half petabytes within just two floor tiles. So for organizations that are looking to build very large data archives, uh, we're saving more floor space, more tiles, uh, more data that are power and cool compared to other systems that you can deploy for that type of requirement. And then finally, talking a lot about a lot of the, uh, the software intelligence that we built into the system, um, we're reducing the total cost of ownership by introducing a lot of new features into the system that basically make the scaling out of uh, data intensive applications easier and simpler to manage. These include things like our embedded compute capability or our storage fusion processing, which allows us to host within these systems up to 16 virtual machines. Uh, these systems are um, capable of doing anywhere anything from uh, File parallel file storage service to uh, pre and post processing engines that our customers want to embed within the storage so that they're no longer shipping their data to their compute. They're actually shipping their applications to where the data lives. <clears throat> Allows for not just system consolidation, but also latency reduction for data intensive applications. Beyond that, we're, uh, we're also introducing uh, a new concept called the storage fusion fabric. This is a non-blocking system that we built into the the technology that allows allows our our system to basically aggregate 
five times the amount of performance, five times the amount of um, uh, storage access density within the system as compared to competing technologies. So what does that mean? It means basically that uh, with a uh, just about a terabit per second backend, I can handle all sorts of things uh, ranging from system failures to the concurrent access of hundreds of hard drives, hundreds of solid state drives in real time such that we actually get considerably better sustained performance than any competing platform out there. So as we look towards supporting things like uh, SSD drives, uh, uh, as they become more and more economically attractive to our customers, we're making those drives uh, more economical by aggregating them within a single system and not having to force our customers to proliferate a lot of systems because of uh, internal bottlenecks. Two other aspects of the announcement. Um, we're also featuring a quality of service. DDM for a long time has been um, in the business of supporting the highest levels of quality of service to the marketplace. The SFA 12K uh, is the first SFA version to, um, to get read quality of service that allows for very large straight file I.O. to happen predictably um, without any sort of performance degradation, even as you're dealing with normal system failures that will routinely take performance down in competing technologies. Uh, and then finally, we're bringing to market a, um, an, an enhanced capability that rolls under our SataShore brand um, called SataShore Plus, which allows us to power cycle SATA drives individually. And basically, we've introduced this capability so that users of very large components of SATA or nearline SAS drives have the ability to now when these drives become unresponsive, go one step beyond traditional systems <clears throat> and power cycle these drives so that uh, as they do become unresponsive, we can be absolutely sure that they're, they're dead as opposed to just being in a, in a stalled state. We found that this technology can reduce the number of drive, instance, drive failure instances by up to 80% as compared to not having this technology. So it's a great way for our customers to reduce their overall systems management and the times that they have to um, deal with systems recovery by the, the intelligence that we built into the platform. I would say if, if I had to um, kind of describe the announcement with the SFA-12K in a nutshell, that would be it. What we're also doing is we're talking about um, how these systems participate in our parallel file storage offerings, both our Exascaler and Gridscaler offerings and um, doing some comparison configurations. We're now capable of, of scaling up parallel file systems to a terabyte a second and beyond with as little as 25 systems. The comparison that we love to do is with our 12K20E system, which has in-storage computing and allows us to, to host the file systems natively within the arrays. With our 12KE platform, we can get to a terabyte a second in only 50 systems on the floor as compared to competing technologies where you'll need in excess of 250 uh, storage systems coupled with anywhere from 200 to 400 storage servers that all, <coughs> excuse me, that all, um, all require their own networking and their own uh, fiber channel capability to be configured into a parallel file system environment as compared to our solution where you don't need any servers you don't need any networking to, uh, to get to that same capability. So it's a dramatic reduction in the amount of componentry, the amount of uh, complexity, and the amount of cost associated with building out very, very large file system environments. So I just talked a whole lot. What questions might you have? Jeff, you know, th we went, before we turned the recorder on, we went over all the stuff you guys got going on um, <laughs> coming up at SC11, and it filled up two pages of my notebook. But um, I wanted to ask you about... Specifically, what activities with uh, partners and customers do you have coming up at SC11 this year? Sure. So, um, so you'll find our equipment and our partnership showcased in over um, 15 booths around the show right now. Uh, we've got demonstrations going on with Indiana University, with uh, Renzi, with uh, Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, with TAC, um, largely around... Um, uh, data grid type services and the collaborative aspects of um, data sharing and data processing that our technology enables for people that want to do 
very long distance research. Beyond that, from a partnership perspective, you'll find our systems and uh, our partnerships highlighted in a lot of key vendor partners that we have, uh, specifically IBM, HP, and uh, SGI are putting our, our systems on display very prominently as a, a key centerpiece for their data intensive computing portfolios. So specific to IBM, we are announcing that um, IBM has uh, added the SFA family of products to their System X portfolio and uh, makes that part of their, their core HPC offering now. Sure. So I guess, you know, I'm looking at some of these specs here. They're kind of mind-blowing, Jeff, a, a terabyte per second, right, with 25 systems. Um, but I wanted to ask you about this open letter that you mentioned earlier uh, when we were talking. It's about exascale. And is a terabyte a second just a, a fraction of what we're going to need for a system like an exascale box someday? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, uh, to give you a good benchmark, I would say a terabyte a second today is appropriate for a, uh, for lack of a better word, a hungry 10 petaflop system. And I, okay. I mean, one that, that, that has a, uh, you know, a fair amount of data access requirements. Looking beyond that, uh, I think, you know, fundamentally you're going to see at least a 100x performance increase. Uh, you will see a fundamentally different type of storage architecture that's required to handle not just the, um, the architectural aspects of power, cooling, you know, how do I handle these types of disks, how do I integrate it with flash, how do I deal with these types of networks, but more the data access methods and the data models would really have to change as we move toward uh, the exascale era. So, so DDN is going to be basically beginning a discussion at the show around our beliefs on how this is possible, our, uh, our fervent belief that Data analytics has to be wrapped into all of this in a way that uh, the scientific computing community today doesn't really um, embrace as much as we think there's an opportunity for it to. And we've got a, a number of CTOs at the show that will actually be engaging with our customers around our exascale uh, strategy and, and, and starting the right partnerships so that we can grow by a thousand X in just, I don't know, what is it, seven years from now? Yeah, yeah. It, just, it's, it's just around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if, if what you've got today would feed a, a, a 10 um, a petaflop system, that's only like 1%, right, of, a, of an exascale machine, that, that's just amazing that that's, uh, oh, uh, right? Is that the stake oh, in the at, ground? At, a, at, 1%, at 1%, you really only have to grow 100x. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sounds so much easier. Yeah, you, there you go. I don't want to oversimplify, but... Uh, well, Jeff, this this sounds great. I know uh, DDN's just got a tremendous amount of things going on with HPC, but uh, kind of a wrap up question um, about the business itself. You know, we talked about how you guys were, you know, kind of a block storage company, but you're you're kind of making a shift and you're adding uh, th this object piece to it, aren't you? And what does that mean? Yeah, for sure. So so our object storage system is on display at. Um at Supercomputing, we've got a data grid built out of it with a number of different research customer partners. Uh, it, it's one element of a, um, a scale-out strategy that we have. So if you look, you know, if you just kind of look on the other side of the aisle to the things that are happening in the hyperscale data centers uh, in the web space, object storage is all the rage. So we yeah. believe that there is an opportunity for convergence here. People are dealing with relatively the same sizes of uh, of, of scale, um, the access is a little bit different, but I think that these communities are learning from each other how to scale on different dimensions that they've maybe got better uh, uh, better lead in. So, um, you know, the, uh, so so as we as we look towards the exascale era, there will absolutely be an, an object part of our strategy, which I think um, will require partnership with the the application developer community and. Um, the people in the web space have already done it. Uh, we know it can be done. It's just a matter of um, having the right architecture to, to express that and, and just work. Well, that's terrific. Well, Jeff Denworth, uh, VP of Marketing at DDN, I want to thank you for coming on the show today. Oh, no problem. Thanks so much for having me again, Rich, and uh, I'll see you in Seattle. Oh, for sure. 
Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.